Hello and welcome to the Maths Diagnostic Question of the Week number 20 with me Craig Barton where each week I pick out a question that has been answered on my Diagnostic Questions website and we have a look at the data behind the question but far more importantly than that we have a look at the students explanations themselves to see if we can identify and understand any key mistakes or misconceptions they may have. Now something a bit different this week. Whenever I mention the topic to ste of stem and leaf diagrams to my year 11s, they literally groan at me and say, sir, they're dead easy then, they're boring, we can do them, we never make any mistakes on them, blah, 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 blah. And when I say to them, what do you need to remember to get a stem and leaf diagram right? They're like, they rattle off the usual things. Get the stem, get the numbers in order, and the key. You must remember the key. So you would imagine that there'd be no point in spending any extra time in lesson on stem and leaf diagrams once students can draw them. However, it was very interesting. I was at a meeting um, about where we were reviewing the uh, Edexcel Higher June 2014 paper, so last summer's GCSE, and there was a stem and leaf diagram question on there, and it was ridiculous the amount of marks that were dropped on it. And we were asked as a, um, as a group of teachers to try and mark uh, a typical student's responses to this question, and I was dishing out full marks left, right and centre, but it turns out students were making a very common and very crucial mistake. So I wrote a diagnostic question about it, set it to my students uh, to see if I could catch them out as well, and here's what happened. So uh, let's find the question itself. So if you go into data and questions, and this is the way to find all the questions that have lots of nasty misconceptions with them, uh, go to maths, um, and we want stem and leaf, so I'm going to go to data and stats, and I'm going to go to data and representation, and fingers crossed, here we have stem and leaf diagrams, and let's see all the questions on stem and leaf, and this is the one I want. So let's uh, give this a little click, and at this point in the video, um, as ever, I'm going to invite you to pause it, have a look at the question, and see if you can think what the, uh, what the correct answer is, and then what do you reckon the most common uh, wrong answer given is and what explanations do you reckon students give for that? So give the video a pause and then unpause me and I'll be back. Okay, so what do you reckon? So we were presented pretty much with this question um, as it is. I've changed all the numbers and, and slightly changed the context and asked to grade it or mark it. And I gave full marks because I had a quick glance. At, I counted up the numbers, counted up the numbers um, in the leaf part of it. That seemed fine. Um, I was careful there was 215s, I checked that they were there, uh, everyone was happy, I checked that I was happy with the stem, quick glance at the key, everything seemed in place, big, big tick, three marks or whatever it was. Um, and most, thankfully most other teachers did the same thing. However, there is a mistake in this, uh, in this stem and leaf diagram and you can find comfort in the fact that not only do teachers not spot it, but students don't either. Because if I go to advanced, uh, we can see that, and if I change the percentages, we can see that the correct answer is B, but by far the most common wrong answer is D, with over half respondents saying there are no mistakes. So what's the what's the uh, the problem here? The key is incorrect. Is there a problem with the key? Now once you once you look at it, you can see well yeah there is a problem with the key. Here's the heights in centimeters, and the key is saying uh, number of children. But I think students are just glancing at the key just to check that's in place, or just writing it down without thinking about it much. And I'm certainly guilty of that as a teacher, just saying, remember your key, without emphasizing exactly what that key needs to be. And maybe um, I'll say one, two, line five is 125, but how often do I spend emphasizing the actual units? Not all that often, I don't think. So let's see what the students who got it right said. And there's some beautiful explanations here. Look at that. The question asks for the height and the data represents centimeters, not children. Brilliant. Um, I really like this one as well. Uh, because the key should say 125 centimetres, not children, as it's talking about height in centimetres. It seems obvious when you well, when students are saying it and saying it so well like that, but it certainly wasn't obvious to me when I was looking at it. And it certainly wasn't obvious to, to many of the other students answering this question. Uh, the other wrong answers bring some interesting reading as well. What about this? The STEM should only have one number in it. That's a mistake um, I come across every now and again when I teach STEM and leaf diagrams. And of course, you have to teach it every year because it, it's on every scheme of work from year seven onwards. So here's, here's a common one. And let's see what the students make of that. So if I change that to A, um, the STEM should have just one number in it. It's not like this one where it has two numbers in it. Um, I think this is the answer because you're only meant to put one number down the side and so on. This is interesting because the number on the STEM should only have one digit because it represents a 10. Again, not an incredibly common misconception, but certainly one that needs addressing, I feel. Uh, B, we've covered, so now, now let's have a look at C. There is a number missing. I put this option in there just to check whether students could correctly transpose the numbers in the list and put them in the right place in the STEM. And I just wondered whether I could unearth any misconceptions there. 
Um, it's it's interesting here. Uh, a lot of them are drawn to the fact that 113 is missing. Now it's fascinating this because 113 is there and it's tucked away at the side. But I guess I guess this just goes to show that students really have to be careful with with just putting numbers into the stem and leaf diagram or, or checking them. And it's a classic thing of saying check your working and all that that, that students never do. But these are little one mark mistakes, and that one mark will be absolutely deadly when it comes to uh, comes to their final grading. And finally, D. D fascinates me here. No mistakes. The stem and leaf diagram is correct. And students do exactly what teachers do here. Um, and it's fascinating. They even acknowledge the fact that they've checked the key. Look at this. Uh, where we go? Because the key is right. The diagram is right. Blah, blah, blah. The stem and leaf diagram is correct. Uh, here we go here. The key works. There are no errors and the key is correct because you've put all the numbers in and the key is correct. That emphasizes so clearly to me that students and teachers are simply glancing, seeing that the key is there and moving on without paying full attention to the key. Now, maybe I'm getting a bit carried away with something here. Um, and worst case scenario, it's going to cost one mark to the students. But those single marks add up. And those single marks are the one that stop students getting C's and stop students getting A's and A stars. Um, and how can you rectify this? I mean, you can tell students till they're blue in the face to check the, check the working out. But my students certainly aren't experts at doing that. But I'll tell you something. When I set this question as part of a quiz, and I'll show you the quiz in a second, um, and over half my kids, and these are very bright kids, got it wrong. This became the biggest talking point. And hopefully, by showing questions like this, where students have to spot mistakes, it really does register and lodge in their heads so that when they come to do stem and leaf diagrams, hopefully this will be something that rings a bell and they'll think, right, I'm going to just check this key absolutely perfectly this time. So if you are looking for um, a quiz um, that this belongs to, I actually uh, took the June 2014 Edexcel paper one and paper two, in fact, and I remixed all the questions um, to test the same skills and broke them down and so on. So if you go to the quizzes page and you just type in GCSE, uh, then there's lots of GCSE based questions, but uh, quizzes, but this is the one I'm interested in. GCSE extra questions, that's paper one there, and GCSE extra questions, that's paper two there. Feel free to set that to your students, and that'll give you a really good breakdown um, of not only their strengths and weaknesses, but specifically where they're going wrong in each question. So I hope you find that useful. And I will be back with a fresh question of the week next week. Take care, and bye for now.